Greetings viewers. This is CP666 signing on for a video that I honestly thought I'd already made by now. Of this, one of the 2019 Hamfest Fies. Just clean some of this dust off of the top of it. Get that out of the way. This is an Emerson model Lifetimer 2. Not sure if you will be able to read that right there. We'll try and get it into focus. There we go. I gotta put it into telemacro in order to do that. So you can see there's the Emerson badge. Uh, this is, I guess, technically a clock radio. However, it's a tube clock radio. Uh, if you go ahead and you can have a look here, there's a speaker on the side. Unfortunately, the grill is coming off. Uh, I'm probably going to have to, I think Gorilla Glue might be able to fix that, but I'm not sure if I should use Gorilla Glue on that. It's supposed to look like this, but you can see it's falling off. Um, I think except for like a little bit over here, the glue has pretty much completely failed. Uh, there's a tone control, there's a volume control, which also I think... No, I take that back. So power switch is right there with positions for, if we go ahead and zoom in on that. For radio alarm off on an auto radio. So I'm not really sure what radio alarm and auto radio, what the difference between the two really is. It's not actually plugged in right now, I just noticed that. So I should probably fix that. But there's a sleep timer on the side, 0 to 60 in terms of minutes. Put that cord in. Uh, the clock is moving, you might be able to see there. I got this for a dollar, so like I said, tone control, volume control, there's your tuner right here, it is an AM only radio, but that makes sense. Uh, if I go ahead and turn it around here, hopefully without damaging too many things, uh, you can see on the back, it's very plain Jane, but there is Emerson Radio and Phonograph Corporation, Jersey City, New Jersey, and this back is provided with an interlock to prevent dangerous electrical shock. Do not attempt to defeat its purpose when you're placing back. Be sure to slip it into guide guides at top before re-engaging interlock. Uh, interlock I believe is this cord back here but I'm not positive. Uh, the time set functionality is done by way of this and I don't even believe you have to move it in any way. I think if you leave it alone and I'm going to verify this right now. It's for time set. If you pull it, no, it is for you. If you push it, I believe it's for the alarm, which is really difficult to deal with. But if you pull it, it's for the time. So, I mean, if we go ahead and take a look here, we'll flip it back around this way. And then we'll just take a quick little look see at the clock. And normally, pulling it and I can set the time. If I push it, I can set the alarm, which is really difficult to do. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong with that or if that's just by design so you don't accidentally change it. Let's try turning on the radio and we'll see what happens. It will take a little while because it is too based to warm up. So it should now be on. some interference. That's really annoying. Let me try unplugging a bunch of stuff, see if the interference disappears. Well, anyway, we'll just, I guess, just leave it as is and we'll try tuning it. Away from where it was. Well, I, I say two times, but student Carmen is fine as well. Yeah, you know, that was, that was a great piece of, of, of media hype. So, the story about the Pharaoh's curse is, is quite simple. Um, Susan Carmen's tomb, biggest discovery of all time, big media sensation across the world. Every correspondent in Egypt wants to get a piece of the action. But hey, Lord Carnarvon does an exclusive deal with the Times in London. 
which has it all thrown out. And you have all these other journalists. <laughs> See if we can pick up anything other than the local stations. Being as late as it is at night. Sort of. I think there's a lot of interference though. I've got it plugged into a UPS, which is probably not a good idea. Smell the tubes. There's just that, that specific smell that they give off when they get warm. There's that interference again. That's pretty much it. So we'll turn the radio off. And I'm not sure if I pull it back. There's not really a whole lot of room to see in there. Maybe I'll turn it back on. I'll turn the speaker off. I'll turn it up so I know that it's on, and we'll see if we can see some tube action in there. Okay, as mentioned, it's a little difficult to see in there, but you might be able to make out some tube filaments. Glowing nice and bright in there. I don't want to take the back off, because I don't really feel like messing with it right now. I believe it looks like there might be more tubes in there than just the two that you can see that are visible, the two that are really visible anyway. But I can't really see any other filaments. There might be one down there. But uh, either way, you know, you got to see some tubes at least. I don't believe this thing has been dealt with electrically other than by way of a new power cord. I'm sure that the person that did the work will uh, be by shortly to either correct or amplify me, but uh, there you go. So that's pretty much it for this uh, Emerson Lifetimer 2 tube-based clock radio. We turn the radio portion off. You can see those tube filaments go dark. Just like that. So thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then.